welcome back guys this is Ibrahim Qureshi here and today we are going to look into the vCenter server management interface uh, for those of you who are joining me for the first time I'm Ibrahim Qureshi I'm a v expert 2019-2020 my website is agileops.co.uk be sure to subscribe to my website and subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and like for new updates we are continuing our VMware uh, tutorial for beginners session number six um, this is take uh, I'm going to take you from the basics so if you are joining me for the first time uh, you will understand that this is th this course is designed for anyone who doesn't know anything about VMware and I'm going to teach them from the basic to a very good advanced level so let's get started course content for today um, well, this is the overall course content. We log into the vCenter with uh, administrator at vSphere.local. So that is the production or uh, the main interface. But you can also log into the management interface to do some admin work. Uh, and what kind of work that will be, we will be discussing today. So for logging to the uh, administration, administration login to the v, uh, vCenter server appliance management interface, it's going to be your vCenter name colon 5480 or vCenter IP address if you're not having a fully qualified domain name and then colon 5480. So 5480 is the port which we need to use to get connected to the management interface. Makes sense, yeah? Now let's see what we can do. We can monitor the VCSA health. We can check the CPU and memory, disk, network and databases. Um, we can do basic configuration, we can set up the NTP pool, uh, we can set up the syslog server, so it's, it's also very good for us to, uh, you know, send logs to an alternative uh, syslog server if you have one in your organization. Next we look at upgrades, so today I'm just going to show the page, we can't do much because we are running the latest version of vCS7 and there's no updates available. So I will uh, full session on upgrades on VCSA, uh, VCSA vCenter server plans in coming days when VMware launches any updates for this brand new vCenter. Could be three months time or could be longer, don't know. So <clears throat> stay tuned for that. Excuse me. Um, We'll also look into backups. There's a lot of people who ask me how to configure backups on vCenter, and um, I thought this will this session will cover backups as well, and this is why I have put it here. Then we'll look into reboot and shutdown options, which we get from the uh, management interface, and then we'll look into services. In services we can what we can do with services is we can monitor start stop and restart which is really handy for us to restart one particular service if a particular survey like hardware monitor is stopped and stuff like that and then we'll look into exporting support bundles and then we'll look into networks and that's about it I guess so let's get started whoops sorry sorry about that <coughs> Okay, then let's get started. Let's have our demo now. Uh, where is my uh, so demo now? Just going to quickly load. So, as you know, this is the front end interface, which is where we log in with administrator at lab.vsphere.local in my situation, or it could be different for you. And when we log into the admin interface it is your ip address or your domain name um, for some reason my domain name wasn't working so i'm using my ip address again ip address colon 5480 remember that so let's start from the beginning so this is the summary page i love this page because it gives you a quick glance of which build number you have the version of vCenter you're running um, and again whether you're having external or not i guess Going forward, there won't be any external anyway, so it will be always embedded platform services controller. Um, the build number is important, and then overall health you can see tick boxes for health, CPU, storage, and swap. If any of this goes red, then I'll show you how to troubleshoot them. So, if say for example you see a uh, storage and it goes red, so what we can do is we can go and check in monitor 
and again this monitor tab is very important because you can monitor CPU and memory as you can see here um, and then obviously we can have disk so if one of the uh, storage is alerting you need to come here in disk and we can see if one of them is fully you know at the brim of 90% or 95% usually you see that in logs here um, and again as you can see there's a lot of disks right so VMware has moved away from Suzy Linux which was their VCSA uh, appliance built on uh, and then they basically moved to their own propriety OS which is called Photon OS which is having uh, which is built with containers and uh, this is, Photon OS is highly customized for one purpose only to give you uh, super fast and high performance vCenter server and look how customized it is each and every disk each and every partition is on a separate disk so there is no is uh, everything is isolated so there they won't be any you know issues if one partition get filled obviously you will have issues but then it won't affect it um, to other partitions so this is the best practices for Linux anyway and they are basically implementing it in their you know appliance now you can check the networks as well here and then lastly you can see the databases so if it says that there is a problem with databases you can go and check what is happening here uh, you know uh, over here is CPU but obviously databases are here and it's just flat there's nothing going on at the moment as you can see but the good thing is you can go back and check so I only installed it on 10th can't find much so let's move on that's pretty much it in this section access so you can enable disable SSH DCLI um, and then console CLI as well from here so all you have to do is click edit and then toggle the buttons and then you can if you want to enable bash then you can set a timer a timeout for that as well next we'll be looking at networks so networks you can see um, VMware has um, added a new feature in this version 7 you can now have multi homing um, if you want to find out more about multi homing check out my blog agileops.co.uk so what that means is your vCenter can set can actually sit in two isolated subnets uh, it could be 192.168.1.1 and you could have another one which is 172.168.1.1 uh, or something like that so completely different uh, uh, subnet it's called multi homing so it wasn't supported till uh, 6.5 and 6.7 but now it definitely supports it um, firewall there's not a lot we can do here uh, there's not a lot to really do here anyway um, because it's all customized OS as I said you could potentially add new rules if you are basically doing multi homing maybe that's the only thing I can think of uh, but if you're doing multi homing you need to set up routes anyway um, time protocol so by default basically it uses the ESX host but I have gone ahead and changed it to pool.ntp.org um, I don't normally want to put a, a DNS for NTP server I want to put IP addresses but I couldn't find an, a pro decent one and this is quite good it has a pool of uh, NTP servers so I'm using that one um, and then you can see the current time as well it's nearly 2.51 which is nearly 3 o'clock in the morning um, let's move on to the services now this is another important um, uh, an important page I would say because you can easily pick up if there is a service which is not working and you're getting alerts you can quickly go here and check whether it is um, automatic and if it is stopped and if it is automatic and it's stopped then that means obviously it's something wrong with it um, if it's manual and it's stopped like this one which is fine but if it's automatic and it's stopped then what you need to do is you just need to click on start because it's stopped or if there is a service which is not behaving properly you can go there and um, basically restart it like this it shouldn't take much time it just goes through and then stops the service and then starts the service as well after that um, while this is happening in the background let me just remind you to be sure to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and um, to get all the updates and also like my videos um, if you like it like it please show that you uh, you're liking it and hit that smash that like button please 
okay um also want you to share these videos with your friend so that you know the more people learn they obviously they will be understanding the new technology and it's a new skill and a good skill to have virtualization with vmware so there you go so that's done now and then what we are going to do next is um, i'm going to briefly talk about another new service which vmware has launched uh, a new feature which vmware has uh, bring with v uh, with vCenter 7 which is called vCenter server profiles you may already know about vCenter server host profiles uh, but if you're new basically we had a concept for host profile where you have um, you know we have one vCenter but we have like 20 hosts you don't want to go in and set up NTP server on 20 times and uh, set up you know uh, vMotion IP and all that you'll see these things uh, in the coming days but so what we can do is you can create a host profile from one host, configure it properly and create a host profile and then apply that profile to all the 19 of them and it will be done like that. Like obviously not that quick but obviously it will take maybe 5 to 10 minutes to do, uh, do all of them uh, or maybe half an hour to do all of them but if you were doing 20 of them uh, manually it might have taken you one day you know so the same concept they have seen that big organizations are now having multiple vCenter servers so what they have done is they have created something called vCenter server profiles I have actually written a really cool um, blog about it and uh, it's on my website agileops.co.uk vCenter server profile as you can see here you have your vCenter you export your configuration which you think are useful for you so the appliance configuration networking and user privileges and then this is all done by JSON there is no GUI, uh, GUI graphical user interface so far uh, and then once you export it you can validate it and then once it is validated you can import it on these new vCenter servers so I know quite a lot of vCenters have been um, increasing in the organizations and this is going to be a really nice uh, um, feature to have really uh, so i'll put the link of my blog in my uh, reference and uh, related videos tab on my description so be sure to check it out um, while i was talking about my blog i want to show you that i have created a new post for vmware tutorial for beginner it's called vmware tutorial for beginners vcs7 detail agenda so this is the detail agenda which i went through when i launched it but what i have done is i have uh, put all the modules here and what I'm going to do is every time I release a new video I'm going to put a link here underneath so you know which one it is and if you missed anything you can come back here and check it out so be sure to bookmark this page um, I'll show you an example like this is the first video which we launched for VMware certification uh, introduction to VMware certification and the link is here and then you, all you have to do is click it and then you'll be taken to the video so hope I'll find. Uh, hope you guys will find this very helpful. So going back, updates. This is something which we are going to check later on because, um, as you know, this uh, is the latest version of vCenter, and we don't have any updates to do at this point. So we'll revisit this later on. Then we have admin tab, administration uh, tab here. So uh, one important thing here is you can change the password if you want to. If you have set up something and you want to change it and you will uh, you'll also be able to set a expiration date of your password if you are in your production environment I would say set your password to like 90 days or something so um, you you get a warning when it is basically uh, going to well basically set set up to 90 days for security reason and then you can also set up an email address for uh, warning um, expiration warning so if it may say it's going to expire in two days and you can go and change it for now because this is my lab environment I'll leave it at no um, next is syslog so you can just go here quickly click on configure put the IP address of your syslog server TLS or if you have any other protocol which you to use as UDP maybe and put the port in and then that's it and if you have multiple of them just keep on adding and then add um, save it and that's it um, it's a good feature basically you can export these logs to a syslog server and have it centrally maybe um, then another option or the last option here 
is backup so we can click on um, backup now it will do a backup for you or you can configure the backup to be sent to a tft website so you just need to set it up set a password username and password configure wh what level of backup do you want daily weekly or custom backup and then obviously i would say weekly backup of this or daily backup at a particular time if you want to encrypt it you can put a password in um, and then that's it really um, as you can see uh, start events and task stats event sorry stats events and task is 67 MB and then the inventory is 226 MB and again my VM is tiny it's uh, recent is tiny it hardly has any data so it's still you know nearly 250 MB already so it's good to set up backups for your own uh, benefit really and snapshots are not backups just to let you know um, so that's it we are pretty much done before we finish I just want to show you another thing um, about actions so we have the shutdown and reboot here if you want to reboot your vCenter appliance you can reboot it from here or you can reboot it from virtual console anyway um, also we have the switch theme which takes you to the, the dark mode uh, which is pretty good very good for your eyes I guess um, and then switch it back if you want to and then the last thing which I wanted to discuss was about the support bundle so if you click on actions you can create a text support bundle for uh, pulling the logs and sending it off to VMware if you have any issues in your environment so all you have to do is click on that and it will create a bundle and at the bottom here as I have done earlier it will download the tech support bundle for you and once this is downloaded you just need to write the SR with uh, VMware or if you already have a service request with, uh, request with VMware you can just upload it to them I'm pretty much done here guys the last thing is root you can log off root um, and what if you forget the password for this particular vCenter server you can't go log in on this uh, on this interface at all or you cannot SSH to it so there is a way to reset it I have created a vid I have already created a video which shows how to reset your vCenter root password I'll put the link in the description below uh, just in case if someone has forgotten or maybe not now six months down the line then you can just google my video and you will be able to um, recover the password and log in again or maybe it, it might be just forgotten password you just didn't remember what you said it though so you can reset it that's not a problem um, that's all for uh, this section and I think uh, it was really nice to discuss this particular topic because this is a very important topic which is center server management interface um, these are the related links so my URL for my agileops.co.uk blog URL for the VMware tutorial for beginners agenda and I'll use it as a big bookmark for yourself and we can uh, I will keep uh, updating it so all the links will be there on each section so you can have a central repository of all my videos in one page um, also this is the blog which I discussed about vCenter server profiles give it a read and let me know whether you like it um, question of the day today what is the port to log in to the vCenter server appliance management interface so I hope you remember the port comment down below and let me know whether it is 5480, 443, 23, or 80. Um, my blog, as I said, is agileops.co.uk. I will be trying to post uh, screenshots and um, helpful tips over there. So make sure you check it out. My Twitter handle is Ibrahim Qureshi, at the rate Ibrahim Qureshi. Send me a direct message. Let me know how you're getting on. Let me know if you need any help. Uh, you can also comment on below and uh, let, uh, let me know if you need uh, any information or any clarification. Um, on Twitter I would say follow me on Twitter and uh, send me a direct message um, give me information of what are your studying pattern and uh, how much time you are putting aside to do VMware really and whether you have a home lab or you need help setting up a home lab or if you need uh, any help for any online uh, labs so message me and let me know and I'll see um, I'll see what I can do for you guys uh, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell to get all the new updates from me. Enjoy watching and keep sharing. Cheers. Bye.